Hello again guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we will be talking about responsive design. You know with everyone using different gadgets nowadays, making sure that your product designs look great in every possible screen is more important now than ever because most of the traffic in the internet and the consumption of digital products is done through mobile devices and that's where responsive design comes in. It's basically a set of practices and settings that you give your designs so they can fit from the smallest phone to the hugest wide screen on desktop. So as always, I'll try to give you key concepts so that you can have an actual understanding of the subject, but then I also give you practical tips that you can use today to make your designs responsive. We will go through basic definitions and things you need to understand first, then I will show you some of the most common practices in a very visual way, and at the end I will show you a very handy plugin that you can use to better prototype your responsive designs and show your team members or clients how your designs adapt to different screen sizes. So let's go! Okay guys, so to get started, let's get some key concepts down. The first of them being, of course, what is the responsive design? Uh, so basically, responsive design allows a digital product, be it a website or an, or an app, to adapt automatically depending on the size of the device uh, and kind of rethinking, index, rethinking the experience from uh, a mouse controlled experience to a touch controlled one. So you wanna avoid the user unnecessary panning, zooming and scrolling and any other uh, tedious interactions that wouldn't make a good experience for them. The second thing is breakpoints, uh, which are basically visual limits that determine when a layout should change and it's gonna be clearer uh, with one of the examples and a plugin I will, I will show you, but it's basically telling the, the system to change the layout once the the frame size or the screen size reaches a defined uh, pixel width or height and finally above the fold which is actually a term that comes from print media but specifically in ux it refers to the portion of a web page or an app uh, that is immediately visible to the user so it's the portion of the screen that they don't have to scroll to see so basically when the app or the website loads is the first thing they see and it's of course very important because that's the first impression the user gets so we tend to use that space for the most relevant uh, information our next key concepts are two different approaches in which you can tackle a design challenge uh, basically the first one is called mobile first or progressive enhancement in which you start by creating an optimized version for mobile devices of your website or app and you progressively enhance it for larger screens. An advantage of this is that you will remain more focused on the key features and end up with a more lean and neat final product. And the opposite approach to this is desktop first or graceful degradation in which you start by creating the desktop version first and then adapt it to smaller screens. The advantage of this is you have more real estate and more screen space so you will be able to add more complex features and then try to implement the most important ones into the smaller screens. But in summary, the choice between these two approaches will be defined by who is your target audience, what's the nature of the website or app, and in what context is going to be used. Mobile first tends to prioritize simplicity and performance, catering to the growing audience of the mobile-based users, while desktop first allows for more complexity and a richer set of features that might require careful adaptation to smaller devices. Some key benefits of using responsive design is you will have greater usability, you will create a better experience for a wider range of users, and it will drive more traffic because you are catering to a greater user base. And let's move on to the general recommendations. So keep in mind, these are general good practices or things that uh, you tend to see repeatedly being used uh, when creating responsive designs, but most of the times you're gonna have to use your judgment and decide what you will need to do to create a better responsive experience in specific scenarios. With that being said, these general recommendations will probably come in very handy and will be a great starting point. So the first thing you will generally consider is your layout. Uh, you, you have to switch your mind from a static layout to a more fluid one, so you gotta take advantage of Figma's features such as fill container or gap between. So in this example, you can see if I try to rescale the size of this frame, 
uh, the elements are completely non-reactive to that so you have to change our mentality and start thinking whenever a dimension change occurs how are my elements supposed to react to this so in this very basic example you can use features like fill container so you can select all of your elements and instead of having them as a fixed value you can use features like fill container which will make those elements fill the available space with with a defined gap between them on the other hand you can leave the elements the same size but you can make a, the, the space between them adapt to the frame size so you can set the spacing between two auto and this will make the gap between them fill all the available space another common thing you will notice being repeated is the switch from horizontal layouts to more vertical ones of course because the, our interaction with mobile devices is in a more in a more vertical orientation so a very handy feature is the new auto layout wrap feature you're gonna see the, if i try to resize this nothing happens but if i set it to wrap it's gonna start wrapping the elements to the next line so if i decrease it enough it's gonna become basically it's gonna switch between the amount of columns i have which by the way in mobile we tend to use more of a one or two columns uh, layer for the for the display of content the next big thing you might want to consider is the general size of the elements inside of your compositions specifically things like type will really affect how much space um, a design takes in your screen so for example you might consider adding different versions of an h3 or a heading tree uh, font size to your design system so you, you might want to have a different h3 setting for desktop tablet and mobile uh, because i've seen people using for example in the hero section they will use an h1 for desktop but then obviously the h1 is too big for mobile so they will use instead like the h3 version but in theory the correct design practice will be to define one h3 size for desktop one h3 size for tablet and one for mobile the next is you will tend to notice uh, the use of full width buttons so switching from small buttons in desktop to buttons that kind of cover the whole available space on mobile and this creates a better experience in mobile because that's a very that's a much easier button to tap and it doesn't matter if you are left-handed or right-handed you will get a better reach of that button with your hand okay next you have to consider also the size in important elements like images first of all you have to define what images need to remain large across the different devices you can use flexible properties to ensure that those images cover the correct amount of space and do not overflow from their containers when scaled down to smaller screen sizes other common elements you will notice being used uh, when switching from bigger screens to smaller ones is navigational elements such as the hamburger menu uh, you will tend to swap the navigation links being displayed fully on the top of the screens to them being contained inside the hamburger menu users are already very familiar with this type of interaction so they know whatever is contained inside of that menu is of hierarchical importance for the navigation of the website or, or app it saves a lot of screen real estate and it's very intuitive to use but most users other elements such as side menus will increase findability they will centralize important information on a website and allow for vertical growth so you will not be limited by the width it also will allow more efficient scanning and a basic understanding of the architecture of the site you can also consider using elements such as carousels to limit the amount of vertical scrolling the user has to do if the user needs to scroll endlessly vertically to get to any point uh, it's gonna be a tedious experience so you might want to cluster uh, similar elements and switch those specific boxes from a vertical experience to a horizontal one let's keep in mind what i said earlier of switching from horizontal to vertical is still important but now we're not talking about the general layout of the website but of specific um, but of a specific elements that are related to each other so for example if you have a set of cards that describe the services of a company and they're too under a lot uh, you might want to consider stacking those horizontally but a key thing in here is you have to hint the user the existence of those horizontal elements because if not they might miss them a very important mindset switch you have to make is that users are no longer using the mouse but they are using their hands so you have to consider how far the user can reach with their hand uh, what spots in their screen are going to be easier for them to reach which ones are going to be more of a stretch and which parts of the screen are going to be just plainly uncomfortable to reach 
Another important concept in here is touch targets. You have to design elements that are easy to tap with the fingers. Uh, a general best practice in here is making the touch target of elements be a minimum of, of 44 pixels. Keep in mind the icons do not need to be 44 pixels wide or high. They can be for example 24, but the touch target around them should be a minimum of 44 pixels. And this is basically defined according to the average size of the tip of the finger of a user. You should also ensure there's enough spacing between elements, so you just don't accidentally tap elements they didn't intend to. And finally, I'm going to show you a very cool plugin that you can use to display or to prototype how your layout will change to adapt to different screen sizes. So this plugin is called Breakpoints. I already have it installed, but you can look for it in the community page. It has a 15 day trial, but if you're going to use this a lot, I think it's definitely worth the investment. So the first thing you got to make sure before using the add-on is that your designs are already a fluid layout, that they're going to adapt to basic changes in the screen size so if you so if you see this mobile one for example if i increase the size of the screen you're gonna notice the you're gonna notice the top navigation uh there is tick to both ends of this of the screen and also the cards start increasing in size to fill the available space the add-on is not gonna do that for you you gotta do that manually but what the add-on is gonna help you do is define breakpoints and then visualize how when you resize the screen it switches in between layouts let me show you. So once you have your key screens defined, in my case, I made one for mobile, tablet, and desktop. In my mobile one, I made it a one column layout. In my tablet one, a three column layout for the cont for the cards. And finally, in my desktop layout, I made it a four column layout for the, for the cards. Once you have those defined, you're gonna click on new adaptive layout and it's gonna create this frame for you and I'm going to define my breakpoints. So the first one I'm going to leave as it is. The second one I'm going to make 478 for my mobile screen size. I'm going to add a new I'm going to add a new point and this one I'm going to make 990 and I'm going to add a final one 1440 which will be my desktop one. And then the add-on is going to ask you what screen should it fit in each interval. So in the first one, which is from 320 to 478, I'm going to fit the mobile one. So you just got to click on the plus icon and link the frame by clicking on it after that. And you're going to do that for each interval. And that's it. You're going to see you can resize this hide manually by the way you can also define vertical breakpoints but for this example i'm just going to show you how it works horizontally so you're going to see in this line at the top of it it's going to show me where the layout will change so if the screen size is in between the 990 and, uh, and 1440 interval it's going to display the desktop layout but watch what happens when i go below 990 it's going to switch to the three column tablet layout whenever i'm in between this interval and if i cross this breakpoint it's going to switch to my mobile so i try to make this one as simple as possible i try to give you guys some general recommendations but also the key concepts so you can make your own decisions so responsive design is something that you should definitely have in your portfolio most of your projects should include a mobile version of it because yeah nowadays most of the traffic comes from mobile devices and it's just gonna grow so make sure you make your designs responsive because if not you're gonna be missing on a very huge user base and that's it for today guys thanks for watching again please hit the like button if you got any value out of this and the subscribe button if you want to keep up to date with the channel see you on the next one